Scientists may have discovered a room temperature ambient pressure superconductor, a technology that would massively upgrade our MRIs, our maglev trains, and maybe even give us hoverboards. If you're on Twitter, you've probably heard of LK99 and followed along as scientists and hackers and Russian cat girls alike have all rushed to replicate the results of this now famous paper. But if you're anything like me, you may have gotten lost in some of the science, words like Meissner effect or diamagnet or maybe even just magnet. So I think I speak for all of us when I ask, what are magnets, how do they work, and what do they mean for the superconductor hype? Broadly speaking, there are two kinds of magnets. There are electromagnets and there are normal magnets. And intuitively, these seem very different, but we'll see if that's true in just a second. An electromagnet is just a coil of wire with an electric current that passes through it. This, it turns out, is a really simple definition of what a magnet is. It's just what happens when electrically charged objects move. And it's actually so simple to make that I can make it right here at my kitchen table, which I'm going to do tomorrow once my stuff comes from Amazon, specifically the copper wire. The core idea of magnetism is that when electrically charged things move, they either attract or repel each other. Magnets have north and south poles. Like charges repel each other and opposite charges attract. The reason why this is true is confusing in quantum. It turns out that the magnets are passing virtual photons back and forth to each other, which is kind of repelling each other in the same way that if you threw a ball to someone in space and they caught it, it would move them back as they kind of absorb the momentum. So if we let the current of this battery flow through the wire, it's taking what is normally a jumbled mess of atoms and having all the north and south poles all over the place, and it aligns them. This makes it so that the entire nail has a coherent positive and negative alignment, and we can see that things now stick to it. This all happens due to the movement of the battery's charge through the wire. But that opens up the question of what happens with a normal kitchen magnet? What happens with this? There's no movement here. Well, it turns out that there is movement. The movement is just inside the atoms. Electrons have a charge, and when they spin themselves and they spin around the nucleus of an atom, that is an electrically charged thing moving, and so it creates magnetism. Electrons like to work in pairs, and these pairs cancel each other out whenever there's a full shell of electrons around a nucleus. But in cases where those shells are not full, you can have a net charge, which means that the atom itself is actually magnetic. There are only four elements that are ferromagnetic at room temperature. Iron, cobalt, nickel, and gadolinium. Gadolinium, I've literally never heard of it. Wikipedia says that it's used in submarines as a burnable poison. <laughs> It sounds like the worst invention of all time, but whatever. These four elements are magnetic at room temperature, which means that the poles of their electrons are naturally and permanently aligned. And this is why ferrofluids are so cool. They actually show the alignment of the material with the magnetic field with all those little spikies. So this means that we have electromagnets and we have normal magnets, but there's actually a secret, more complex third thing, an electromagnet that doesn't need a continuous outside electricity source to remain magnetic aka a superconductor. The demonstrations of LK99 that we've seen online clearly demonstrate some form of levitation, but it turns out that levitation isn't all that crazy. There's an entire class of materials that exhibits a property called diamagnetism, which means that it repels and opposes the magnetic fields that are flowing around it. For example, there are elements that just do this by themselves, like bismuth. Bismuth is actually the most diamagnetic of all normal elements. Because it counteracts magnetic fields, we can actually float magnets between hunks of raw bismuth. So when we see these LK99 videos online, the question is therefore simple. Is this thing actually a superconductor or is it just really, really diamagnetic? What we're asking on a technical level is apparently, what is the magnetic susceptibility of this material? Normal magnets are made by taking metal and exposing it to a magnetic field. So it magnetizes pretty much forever. Diamagnets are the opposite. They reject the field because they have a negative susceptibility. For bismuth, this value is negative, but just very slightly so. Superconductors in contrast fully oppose any magnetic field that they're entered into. This is the Meissner effect. It just means that chi is equal to negative one, a complete opposition. So how do we know the difference between a superconductor and a normal diamagnet? Well, it turns out there's a lot of ways. A true Meissner effect locks the levitating object in place. You can even turn the magnet upside down and it stays locked. True superconductors are also affected by temperature. Above their temperature limit, you would expect the magnetic behavior to change. You can also reverse the polarity of the magnet. A true superconductor should be able to do the normal levitation thing with both poles, but a normal diamagnet would not. That's actually why it's so funny that in the Chinese video that they showed of the demonstration, the guy sort of like fumbles the magnet when he's holding it. That was the entire point of the experiment, and he fumbles it. You can't even tell if he's sleight of handing his way into just faking it. 
So I hope this helps. I honestly knew almost none of this when I started researching a whole 24 hours ago, and I had a ton of fun learning, so I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. If this thing actually does turn out to be a superconductor, we're gonna wanna know a lot about magnets, so I hope this is a good place to start.